The idea of having both warlords and priests means that this society is developing into something very complex. If you have established roles in a society, you're no longer just a collection of individuals. You are a society that has a hierarchy. And this is exactly what's going to happen to the Aryans. By the time the last hymns were added to the Rig Veda, so that is about 1200 BC, the priests of the Aryans were not only individuals who specialized in taking care of the gods, but they were a whole class of specialists in the religion. This class became hereditary. That means that a father who was a priest would have a son and would train up his son to become a priest after him, and so on. And priests' fathers who had daughters would marry those daughters off to the sons of other priests, so that the priestly line very much was a family line, and it was passed on from generation to generation. Not only was it a family line, it was an aristocratic class. Let's define aristocratic. Aristocratic or aristocracy means the highest class in a society. Usually they have hereditary titles or offices. This ugly word says offices. In the US, we don't really have anything that directly parallels an aristocracy. We have famous people, we have rich people, we have important people, but they aren't necessarily hereditary titles. In fact, even our presidential role is not hereditary, it's an elected role. But you can think back maybe to England and the kings and queens there and the lords and ladies of more European cultures where hereditary titles are far more common. Also think back to ancient Egypt where there is a hereditary office, the kings and queens of Egypt would have been aristocracy. Well, pre can also be an aristocratic position. And the priests of the era were a ruling class. They were the highest class among the Aryans and they had their office and that office was passed on from generation to generation. The Ira or the Aryans were united by philosophy and religion, which stands in contrast to some of the other nations we visited. And those nations or civilizations were held together by political organizations or military strength. You can think of the Hittites and how strong and mighty they were, or you could think of the politics of Egypt and how the kings would be able to rule through great power just because of their title as king, their political structure and the respect that the king had. And that's what held the country together. But in India, in the Indus River Valley among the Aryans, what holds this people together is their philosophy and religion, what they understand about the gods and how they honor them. And because of this, because of the centrality of that philosophy, the priesthood becomes a very important class because what holds the people together is their religion. So therefore the priests of that religion become exceedingly important and become the ruling or aristocratic class. The problem with this for historians is that the Rig Veda therefore tells us a great deal about worship of the gods, but it doesn't focus very much on the actual history of this people. It doesn't tell us about their spread. It doesn't tell us much about any battles they fought because for them, the religion is more important than the actual history of the people. Let's talk a little bit about the Rig Veda because it's what we have. Oh. The Rig Veda is divided into 10 cycles or, or collections, you think, and these are called the mandala. Each mandala contains hymns of praise to the gods and chants to be said during sacrifices and other rituals. So it's instructions and it's praise. So you can think back to sacred knowledge. This is how to worship the gods. This is who they are. We praise them for who they are and this is what they require of us. The Indian gods are nature gods. This means that each one is tied to a different aspect of nature. You probably run into this in your study of Greek mythology with Mrs. Crawford. So aspects of nature would include things like fire, sea, wind, rain, death, etc. It's notable that it's pretty common among people who live in regions where there are harsh environmental circumstances that they will have gods that are tied to nature. So here's a question for you. I'll be asking you this question in your discussion, so think about this. Given the fact that a lot of cultures have to deal with harsh, natural disaster type circumstances and therefore worship nature gods, what makes the culture of the Israelites stand out? I want you to discuss this together. I will post a discussion for you with this question in it. Back to the Aryan Indians. Here are some of their gods. Varuna, the sky god. Ratri, the spirit of the night. Agni, the god of fire. My favorite Parjanya, 
the rain, Mitra, the sun, and most importantly is Indra, the calmer of chaos and the ruler of the pantheon. If you remember what pantheon means, it means the collection of gods of a given religion, all of their gods. So of all of the gods of India, Indra is the ruler. You can think of him like the Zeus of the Indian gods. Notice his name. Right now we are talking about the Aryans that live in the Indus River Valley, but it could be that we are on our way to talking about them as Indians. Here's something I found super interesting. Remember how we said the Mitanni in Mesopotamia and the Aryans in the Indus River Valley are related, that they have common ancestors? Well, the gods I just mentioned, the list I just gave you, these are listed as witnesses in a treaty made not by the Aryans in North India, but by the Mitanni in Mesopotamia. In fact, it's by the Mitanni king Sapaluliuma, who we talked about a few weeks ago, and it's the one that he made with the Hittites. This demonstrates two things. One, the Mitanni were Aryans. We knew that. We knew that the Mitanni kingdom had descended from the same people group as the Aryans in Northwest India. But it also means that the Mitanni and the Aryans had been worshiping these gods before they split into two groups, because otherwise you wouldn't have the same gods in Mesopotamia and in India. Those places are quite far away from each other. So the fact that they both worship the same gods indicates that they have a common ancestor from before they split up and that they've been worshiping these gods for a long time. So this is a quite ancient religion, which is interesting. Okay, the very tiny bit we know about Indian history from the Rig Veda. Here we go. Remember how I said we don't really know anything about the actual history of this people group because there's not really any written text? We only have a couple of glimpses of what may or may not have happened. So in the Rig Veda, there are a couple of books that have a few mentions of events that took place. And these are those events, and they will give us a little bit of insight into the history of this people group. Here's the first thing that we can sort of get from the Rig Veda about the history of this people. In books 2 and 8 of the Rig Veda, the fire god is described as attacking walls with his weapons. Think about what this could signify. I'll wait. The fact that the Aryans record their fire god attacking walls with his weapons suggests that the Aryans, as they spread, attacked villages with burnable wooden walls and burnt them because the weapons of the fire god would be fire. And one hymn mentions a battle with dark-hued people. This may indicate that there used to be a native people group in the region of India that were darker than the light-skinned Aryans and that were wiped out by them. And finally, the seventh mandala describes a war between ten Aryan kings. So it's evident that they also experienced civil war. They fought among themselves. Now you see how little we know about this history. The only thing we have is the Rig Veda and it really only tells us about the gods and the religion. It doesn't tell us very much about the actual history of this people. But what we can gather from all of this is that the Aryans had not only priestly aristocrats, a ruling class of hereditary priesthood, but also warriors who were aristocratic. That is, they had warrior chiefs. And these chiefs passed that title on from father to son. We don't really have many names of priests or warriors chiefs, only glimpses and glimmers. So two power groups among the Aryans, the priests and the warrior chiefs. And the whole culture is centered around the religion, full of nature gods, and the descriptions of these gods and their requirements are written down in the Vedas. The oldest Veda is the Rig Veda, which was written somewhere between 1500 and 1200 BC. We also know that the religion goes back much further. So that's the frustrating reality of history, is that there's going to be some cultures that we're going to keep trying to learn about, but we'll only ever get glimpses and pieces from it. But at least we have even that, and it's a very interesting culture. And as we get closer and closer to the first century, it's going to become easier to accurately recall specific events that took place within given cultures. I will see you guys online. Don't forget to contribute to the discussion, and I hope you took good notes on this lecture, and I will be back with our next one soon.